skeletal muscles work in pairs. Let's write that in. Skeletal that's muscles of the skeleton, of course. Skeletal muscles work in pairs. Now, you might be wondering why I've added the word skeletal in there. And the reason I'm adding that, it's not super important for this specific lesson, but there are other types of muscles in the human body. The muscle of the heart, for example. There are smooth muscles around blood vessels, for example. But we're referring to the sort of the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the biceps, the triceps, the latissimus dorsi, etc. The skeletal muscles, they work, folks, in pairs. Let's get that idea clear. We also know what those pairs of muscles are called. They're called the agonist in any particular movement and the antagonist. We have looked at that previously. If you haven't already, this is antagonist. Didn't leave myself much space there. Sorry, not very good. And if I look at this example here, let, let's assume that this person here is driving upwards in this kind of squat position. Okay, so they're on the way upwards. It's the upwards phase of this movement. So effectively, what's going to happen is that this knee joint is going to go from a flex position, ultimately to an extended position. They're going to be standing up, right? Now, what does that mean? It means that this muscle A, which of course we know as the quadricep group, Remember four muscles in there from previous study. That muscle, which of course is at the moment sort of elongated, it's going to shorten, okay? It's going to shorten. It's going to contract. And in order for it to shorten and contract, another and to cause um, knee extension, another muscle has to allow that to happen. So if we've got our agonist in this contracting, shortening phase being the quadricep, then of course what we've got back here is we've got the hamstring muscles here, and what they are going to do, let me just write that in, these hamstring muscles, what they are going to do is they are going to relax. They are going to allow the movement to, to occur. Now imagine these, these hamstrings also sort of contracted in like this. Well, that would mean that this position would be held still. This is a whole other more advanced principle called the principle of moments. We're not going down that road. But this, what we're saying here is that as one muscle contract the other muscle relaxes and of course this is the antagonist and that antagonist allows the movement to take place the only thing we'd really add to that is you could name the gluteals for example as a fixator muscle so muscles work in pairs so we've got our quadricep and our hamstring group as an example let's look at another one now you'll notice if i was to put sort of a circle around pectorals a circle around deltoids these are what we would consider to be fixator muscles in this particular movement some people will disagree with that because some people can argue the pectorals is the prime mover for a press up actually. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. What we're going to notice is let's assume this athlete is in the upwards phase again of, of the press up or the push up. What we would find here is that the tricep muscle, it's going to contract, it's going to contract and shorten. It's going to be the agonist, okay? And that is going to create extension at the elbow and it's going to force this performer up. But that can only happen if this bicep, which is the antagonist, the antagonist allows that to happen. So this bicep is going to relax and allow the upward movements to occur. Because if it didn't, if it contracted equally with an equal, it's actually an equal torque, not an equal uh, force that it creates. But with an equal torque, what that would mean is that this uh, lever uh, system at the elbow would remain complete, completely stationary, it would remain fixed. So the agonist combined with the antagonist allow movement to happen. And we've got obviously um, exactly the same thing would happen here. I've just removed the labels on this one. Imagine that we are doing a bicep curl in the upward phase. In other words, we are going through elbow flexion in this example. What we would have here, of course, is we would have the bicep which is the agonist, okay? This is the other way around now for, um, this is now the other way around for the, from the press up. And of course, what's this, what this bicep's doing is it's contracting, it's inserting up the origins of that, it's contracting upwards and pulling on this forearm, specifically the radius, and is acting as the agonist. But in order for that to be the case, the tricep, it has to be the, let me just write this in, the tricep has to be the antagonist, it has to be the antagonist and it must relax to allow this to happen. In other words, guys, muscles work in pairs. And I guess the only other word I could bring you back to is that which I said right at the start, which is skeletal muscles work in pairs. And I'd like you to be aware of the bicep and tricep as a pair, the hamstrings and the quadricep as a pair, and try and understand these concepts in relation to movements around the elbow and the knee joint, respectively. Thank you.